Welcome to my channel. I'm new to this, but I'll do my best. Today I'm going to show you how I replaced my fluorescent light bulbs with LED lights on my 2003 Dutch Star. But first, I want to point out that I'm not a professional. I'm simply sharing my own experiences. Attempt this at your own risk. If you don't know what you're doing, hire a professional. I make no guarantees as to your success. Before I started, I turned off the main light switch on the wall. Turning off the switch on the side of the light fixture is not sufficient and can result in a short during the disassembly or reassembly. To disassemble, I first removed the plastic cover over the light fixture by squeezing in on the sides to release it. I then removed the fluorescent bulbs. In my case, they pulled straight out. Next, remove the guard over the electronics by squeezing and pulling it away. I cut the white wire that goes to common. I pulled the two black wires off from the back of the switch. I removed the four screws holding the fixture to the ceiling while holding it in place so that it didn't fall. Pulled the wires out of the small hole in the fixture. Next, I needed to remove the ballast and the fluorescent sockets. To do this, there are six rivets on the back of the fixture that need to be drilled out. Some of the rivets spun when I tried to drill them out, so I used pliers to hold them and stop the spinning. The lights I use can be cut every two inches. This may vary by brand or style of light. I cut a section of light that was about 14 inches long, which was a good fit for my fixture.
I chose to use four separate strips of lights for my fixture. There are two connectors on the end of each light strip. One is positive, one is negative. It's important that these are properly aligned with the power source or your light will not function. I will be soldering my light strips together, but before I do that, I'll demonstrate how the solderless connectors work. Repeat this process until you've added all four strands. Although the solderless connections work fine, I chose to go with a more permanent solution and solder my sections of light together. Since I'm going to solder my lights together, I cut the ends off the solderless connectors and strip them. For added measure, I chose to use double-sided tape to help secure the lights into the fixture.
in making this video, I stuck and unstuck my lights a couple of times, which caused them to lose some of their tackiness. I put two strips on each side of the fixture. The pattern wasn't really important. I just put them in there in a way that just felt natural. It's now time to reassemble the light. I carefully fed the black and white wire through the small hole at the end of the fixture. I reconnected the black wire to the offside of the switch. All of my holes were tied on this fixture, but I have found that if the hole is loose, uh, putting a wooden toothpick in the hole before inserting the screw can tighten things up and give you a nice snug fit. I added a quick connect power plug to the fixture. I did this by crimping a clip on the hot side of the power plug and clipping that onto the other side of the power switch on the fixture. I connected the negative side of the plug to the white wire coming into the fixture using a wire nut. At this point I was able to turn on the main light switch and plug in the power to test the fixture. At this time the light should be fully functional. It can be reassembled and operate as it did before. 
I chose to add an optional Wi-Fi controller to my light. This controller allows me to turn my light on and off with my phone and it also allows me the ability to dim the light. The controller is also compatible with Google Home or Alexa. Be warned that this controller may not function if you don't have access to Wi-Fi. I tucked the wires back inside the electronics cover and clipped it back into place. I then replace the plastic cover. Job complete. Here's a sample of what the app looks like on my Android phone. There's a similar app for the iPhone, but since I don't have an iPhone, I can't demonstrate what that app looks like. In this video it appears the light is flickering when I dim it. In fact the light was not flickering. The flickering you see was caused by the camera being out of phase with the light. That's it for this fixture. Only eight more to go. Thanks for watching. Please post any comments or suggestions for improving this process below. Until next time, have a great day.